All right, blessings you guys for joining me here at HNLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. I'm gonna try not to be with you too long. Got a got a call coming up. Got a conference coming up with some uh, some great people. I'm just coming across and want to learn more about you know some of the work they're doing in the kingdom. You know, here at HNLC Studios, I'm always trying to connect myself with people. You know, in every part of the world. Uh, this is just what the gospel is all about. And learn more about what they're doing and how they're actually coming in uh, contact with more revelation, whether than education with the kingdom of God. And that brings us to a very strong place when we actually look at Scripture and we understand it's not so much that, you know, what a person has wrote down verifying uh, the actually um, uh, a breakdown of a Scripture. But God gives you revelation also. Sometimes we're so dependent and depicted on and just what a person says. About you know the, what we look at scripture and breakdown. It's good to study and see yourself approval, but in the process of looking at scripture, there ought to be some revelation that God has given you. So as He gave the individual who's writing down the historical punch about this particular scripture or passage, a word that we see in the Bible. It's not so much you just got to look at it from your theological uh, point of view. I believe it's God gave you something also to the point you got to really. Um, uh, come into understanding and be in tune with the spirit. You know, a lot of things we come across. Now we're not telling you to make up nothing. You can't make up nothing. You gotta, you gotta, gotta, you gotta jointly fit the word of God together. You gotta make sure it's gonna ride and it's gonna come together and it's gonna make some sense about what the Holy Spirit is giving you based on just what we read down from what we call our breakdown passages. That's good for you to read also, and maybe it can bring a revelation to you about what you're really reading and how it pertains to your lifestyle in you today. Not just concerned about the things that may have happened in that biblical time and day, but what is happening to you now. And some of the things you have to deal with in life as you go forth. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. As always here at HNLC Studios, for giving us the opportunity to come before your word uh, just to hear what you have to say that's coming from your kingdom. Father God, bless the word. Let me continue to be the conduit, that priest that you call to bring forth the word to your people. Let me not stand in the way of anything that you give me, but let everything I speak, Lord, be solidified in the spirit that they may know and understand that you're always in control in everything that you do and say as we become that particular representative here on earth that's come from your kingdom to show the people, Father God, that we are in your hands and we're in the position of doing what you want us to do. As the model prayer says, our Father who in heaven, how there be thy name, let thy kingdom come. Lord, let us be representatives as we bring forth the words we continue to hear from you, Father God. Let us be the conduit here on earth, not by what man says, but what the revelation of God has given us, that we may continue to pipeline the information that you've given us from the kingdom down on earth as being your representatives of the word of God. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. And it's time as we spend with you, Father God, hoping that you would, uh, knowing that you would give us some inside information concerning some of the things we're about to read here in the scriptures here uh, of the Word of God. Let's take one to the book of Psalm 73. Uh, it's been a long time. You know, I read through this a lot. I look at it a lot and I see more and more of it taking place, you know, on a daily basis. And it makes a whole lot of sense that, you know, we live in a time now. Greed is playing a very big role in a lot of our lives. And uh, with the process of, you know, those things coming on, it's like the more you have, the more others want, the more others want, the more they fall into temptation. And the more you fall into temptation, you know, you find yourself lost and shuffled in a world of desires of stuff and things. And then when you get your offer to the kingdom of God, you know, that stuff has never played a role. It's still just left here rotting and decaying. The product, somebody's not going to want what you want it anyway. But you can't gain everything. You got to be able to let go and let God to show you what he wants you to have and the way he wants you to do it, that you be productive uh, with your life you have here on earth. Not for you just to splurge and squander and go out and make yourself look good before other people as if you got it a little bit better than everybody else. The word of God says everybody's got a measure. Everybody's got a measure they got to deal with. How you handle your measure. In other words, how you run your race and how you stay in your lane what the assignment God has given you, and he did give you assignment, according to Jeremiah 1 and 5, you were something imputed in you, and he gave that to you. He told you about the course in which he will take you only if you do a Matthew 6 and 33. Now, Jeremiah 29 and 11 tell you he know the course 
but you got to stick to the word of God. The word of God says you obey all my plans, all my con- all my precepts, and all my statutes. Then there's judgments that won't come upon you. So what is he saying? You're going to go through shadows. You're going to go through valleys. You're going to go through death, peaks, up and downs. That's just the way life is. But in the midst of you understanding, <clears throat> understanding, excuse me, the word of God, God will give you revelatory knowledge, understanding, and guidance. Now, that's the shadows of the valley of death in Psalms 23. But also, he tells you about the very things you need to be aware of, which is in Psalms 1, how he talks about blessing the man that walking not in the council. There are certain things you should not do, and you should be able to please God in the way that you're pleasing him. So his wisdom, his knowledge, his direction will be infiltrated in you, how you here on earth, to give you the proper instruction on the way you should go out and gather the harvest. Now, the word of God tells us all the time, the harvest is truly great. The harvest is white, matter of fact. But the labor and the laborings are few. Now, Galatians talks about the process of walking in the spirit. The first thing he says in the book of Galatians chapter 5, he lets you know in that particular uh, 5 and 14 that you got to have love. That's the law, not laws, but that particular law. The law of all the earth is love. You don't have love, you can't move forward with Christ. The Bible talks about those different areas of scripture. When you go on down in the area of the book of Galatians, he talking about the different um, process of how you should really gain yourself with those um, with those criterias if you're walking in the Word of God. Now we're gonna stay in Psalm 73, and I don't like to kind of I don't like to kind of half cock anything. I kind of like to bring things the way it's supposed to be. And if you go over to the book of Galatians, if you just kind of swoop down over the book of Galatians, and you go over to the book of Galatians, you look at Galatians. Um, now, chapter 6, and I'm not going to serve it to him. I'm trying to push this, but I'm not going to push through it too fast. I don't want to do that. I'm going to make sure you get all what you're understanding here. So look at Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, and you look at the 14th verse. The 14th verse of Vengeance tells you right here that all the law, he doesn't say the laws, he said the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. You should love your neighbor as you love yourself. He said, but in the 15th verse, now this is the process where you fall into, you know, you fall into discrepancy with Christ. We're going to read over in Psalm 73 because what it does is pulls you into temptation and it pulls you into what you call lustful desires. And this was happening in Psalm 73, the sons of Aspen, talking about David's situation. He saw some things that was more familiar or more um, uh, eye attracting than what he saw with the word of God. You know, the word of God tells us, you know, it's the way that seems right. Now, we got to understand that process right there. He says, a way it seemeth right unto a man. Now, that's your own understanding. Now, Proverbs 3 and 5 tells you not to lean to your own, but acknowledge him in all his way. The great gulf and distance that God has between you. When he talks over in Isaiah 55, 8, 9, and 10, he talks about his ways and your ways. Your plans are his plans. Well, if you follow his plans according to what he created you over in the book of Jeremiah 1 and 5, then he tells you, according to Jeremiah 29 11, this is what I have in store for you. For only I know the thoughts and only I know the plans. He put an S on it that I have for you. That means multiple blessings. That means Proverbs 10 and 22. I got blessings in store for you. But if you insist on insisting on going the way of the world, then the word of God comes back and lets you know. It's a way that seems right. Proverbs 3 and 5. But, but the end of his death. Now, Proverbs 3 to 5 said, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. But the process of Isaiah 55, 8, 9, and 10 tell you there's a distance. And whenever you got distance, you got to travel. You got to seek first. You got to ask God to bring closer to you. God said, if you go nigh to me, I'll grow nigh to you. That means in the process of having 55, 8, 9, Isaiah 55, 8, 9, and 10, guess what I got to do? I got to prostate myself. I got to bring Matthew 6 and 33 more in fruition than I ever bought it in before. Listen to me. Listen to me. When the word of God declares that, he tells you as you're going through your seeking, there's a process of things he wants you to stay away from. Nay, nay, stay away from danger, temptation, lust of the flesh, all these things are out there. They're out there to get you. Now, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, we talk about different desires that people have. Now, he speaks about this real strong when you just look at the scripture on down here in the area of the 19th verse of Galatians. He talks about the works of the flesh. Now, he used a law term. He said, this is evident. This is evident that which adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, adultery, sacrifice, hatred, contention, jealousy. Now, he's just reading a variation of things. 
about what can come at you when you fall outside the will of God. But when you come to the 22nd verse, he goes back and replays the word again, how you need to get the blessings of the Lord, which make it rich. Listen to me. He said, when my ways pleases him, what do I get? Desires of my heart. Psalms 84, 11. No good thing. Matter of fact, when you read Psalms 84, 11, he say, God is a son in the shield. Listen to how he's telling you. He's really putting this in coordination with you to understand it. But when you don't understand the word of God and don't meditate on it, you'll fall in line to the wheels of what the devil has in store for you. Now, he says once again, he said, but the fruits of the spirit of love. That's what he says. Now, go back to Galatians 5 and look at the 14 verse. What did he say? The first command in the kingdom to receive anything from God, you got to have love. Listen to me. You can't get into that ethnicity stuff. Am I talking to somebody? You can't say because you this, that, the other, then you don't fellowship with them another. How can you say you love God and you don't have fellowship with your own brother and sister who he created? Now, God is just like a key with a coloring book. He created things in various colors the way he wanted. But when man put his laws and rules and regulations in place, then it all just become all jumbled up, all just jumbled up. When man begin to look at you from an ethnic point of view or a cultural point of view or how you look in terms of a physicality point of view, they begin to judge you. They begin to look at you as if you don't have what it takes to get an overflow from the kingdom of God. Let me remind you what David said. And when the word of God came to Samuel and Samuel had to speak the word denouncing Saul, even in his king's position and upgrading David in his seat, in his sheep clothes. Let me tell you something, man. God will use a murderer. Am I talking to somebody? To show that the power of God can move through anybody. We know Saul was a stickler of the law. We understand that. But God chose him just to prove to man's understanding that he can use anybody to do the work in the kingdom of God. I believe I'm talking to somebody. You may not want to hear it. But when you go back over the book of Galatians, you look at Galatians. He said, but the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, look what he says against what against against that is no law. Now, he says law. He didn't say laws, law. That's imprinted as a law. But in this particular law categorized, if you put a group of these words together and you put the word over the top, what it means? He said it's a law. Each one of these carry a law. You got to have a law of long suffering. You got to have a law of kindness. You got to have a law of goodness. You got to have a law of faithfulness, a law of gentleness, a law. Come on, somebody. I don't know if you want to work with me this morning. But you got to understand all the law, not the laws. You're going to compare them all together and say, which one follows me? All of them. You got to work on. When the man ways pleases God. All right, then. Desires. If I'm not a person that contain all those laws at one time, then what he goes on down here and tells you in that, in, that, in that particular Galatians 5 and 16, he tells you about a spiritual walk. He tells you to walk in the spirit that you don't fulfill the lust and the desires. Come on, somebody of the heart. For the flesh lust is against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. Now he tells you that big word, this big word means controversy. He tells you it's contrary. Really, it's a division going on right there. It's like oil and water. It never can mix. In other words, when you do negativity behind closed doors and nobody see you, Ephesians chapter 2, and everybody been there when we was walking our trust passes and sins, past times, y'all understand what I'm saying? We realize and understand we can't keep those things hidden. That we got to come to God and ask him to forgive us that we may know and understand that we walk in the righteousness of God. That we may feel all that Christ has in store for us. You can't picky boo in sin. You can't say I love him, I hate him, I dislike him, I live like that and then expect to get a blessing from God. Sometimes you see these particular and I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm just a realist. And I just shoot it out there like I'm supposed to. And some people contradict it, but it don't make no matter to me because the word of God is the word of God. You see some of these celebrities and some of these people who go out on stage and then they hold up these little gold statues which they chase all the time. And then they hold up as if it's a God. And then the first thing they say, I want to thank you, God. No, what God you thinking? Because if you got a platform like that, you use to draw the kingdom of God and draw those into place to what they need to be. Now, I told people a while back, they didn't want to hear me on this. I told you to watch out for that Kanye West guy. He's not real in what he's doing. Now you see him back on stage doing a celebrity thing. Out here doing stuff that he had been doing. But he came in and pulled you and duped you by your own mind. And you didn't have enough sense to understand to have a good discernment about what God is trying to tell you. He said in the last days that there are going to be many false prophets will come. 
And then Joe Osteen pulled the guys in, a couple other ministers pulled the guy in, and they prayed him. Thank God for the brother down there in Atlanta, Bernard. You know, Brian, he, he, he saw that thing. He kind of pulled away from it. But I'm trying to get you to understand. The enemy is coming in in such a way that he's down to bump, he's going to bombard you. He's going to duke you. His job is to throw you off course of what God designed you to have. Now, the design is Jeremiah 29, 11. What is the plan and what is the thought, listen to me, that God has for me? If I'm going to do the work of the kingdom of God, then I have to prostrate myself before God and ask him, what is it you want me to do? And when I'm going through activities, proclivities, problems, ups, downs, orange cones, ditches, all kinds of stuff breaking loose in my life, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to prostrate myself before the mighty hand of God. Look into the promises that he promised me, knowing that his word won't go back void. Now, you can read that right on Isaiah 55, 11. For those who really don't want to understand, now you can look at a breakdown if you want to, and you can go off in some kind of karaoke way and do it the way you want to do it from a theological or a natural educational point of view. But he's telling you right there, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, then all of these here, here things will be added unto you. Goes back to the word of God say, when my ways pleases God, he will give me the desires of my heart. Isaiah 55, 11, I am not what? Every word that proceeds, listen to what he's saying, out of the mouth of God will not come back void. Listen to how he's telling you. But it will accomplish all that in therein. You go back to the word of God and you look at the same thing over in the book of Numbers 23, 19 to 21. He lets you know. That he's not a God that's telling you any kind of feebles. Now he's not a son of a man that he should have to repent. The command was in place. He cannot reverse it. Well, God, you don't talk to me. No, stick to the course. He made a promise to you in Jeremiah 29, 11. When you came up out of your mother's womb, he already baptized you, ordained you to be a prophet before the nation. What you have to do is find out what your gift and your giftings are. Stay in your lane. Quit looking over in Sally's lane, Bob lane, Joe lane, and Mike's lane because they got a role, because they got a ring, because they got a title, because they over some great big establishment. And he's kind of looking at your gift. It's not nothing. God said you too have a gift to do something. Takes it back over the word of God over there in Matthew 25. In that 14th verse, that master came and not gave gifts. Well, God gave you gifts too. But if you go into your gift, looking at something else is more pleasing to you. If you go to ways of the world, then expect the fact that happened with the world. If you're bold enough to be a person of the world, expect the consequences that come with being a worldly person. Now, it takes me back over to Psalm 73. I got to get out of here. I got my, got my, my young niece. I got to be on line with her this morning. She promised me. And she's a, raised up when she was a young, young lady. And she grew up to be a fine woman of God, her and her parents, good people. And I just want to just pray. And just ask God to just direct me. And I go into this. If you turn your Bibles over to Psalm 73, I want to kind of show you something. But how this is a very relevant word in a very relevant time. And I got to be careful of my time. I'm going to kind of push it a little bit. But I want you to stay with me. I want you to hear what this prophet is telling you. Because I'm telling you something that's great. I'm not going to come at you with a whole lot of decoration. I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Everybody that stands behind a pulpit, hot and holy, ain't holy. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says you will know them by their fruits. Now, the thing about it, when you look at a person, and their fruits, they can display such a character before you. But you got to not look at the fruits now these days and time. You got to look at the character of the individual because the character of the individual tells a lot about them behind closed doors. Sometimes as old prophets and old men of God tell me, sometimes when they talk and just look at their wife, she'll display a whole lot of things about that individual when he's up there ministering the word of God. If you're doing things at home, you know you're not supposed to do. And the Holy Spirit will be the fly on your wall. He will see all the things you're doing in your household, especially when you're not treating the woman of God right, or she's not treating you right, or she's doing things behind closed doors, or you're doing things behind closed doors. Let the truth be told. Expose the devil and shame him. You can't do things behind closed walls, say so you're a man of character of the good of God, and then you come out and display something in front of other people. Now, that's schizophrenic. That means you need to work on yourself. There ain't nothing wrong with you having upset and having conversations with your wife about certain things, but you got to do things decent in the order. You can't go up beside her head and she go up beside your head. You can't run around in the streets or she run around the streets. And then you come and talk about I'm a pastor and first lady. Matter of fact, the word first lady ain't even in the Bible. I don't know why we keep on saying that. We keep on adopting things from the world and bringing it into the church. 
I don't know how we got caught up with the Golden Glove Awards and the Soul Train Awards, and we're supposed to be Christians. And the word of God tells me very clearly, be holy for I am holy. Now, how do we get in God? Man, anyway, just, 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 just got to hear me. That's what David deals with in Psalm 73. Pretty much some of the things I'm talking about. You can't go in the house of God, come before the stage of God, and you become so revealing to people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, sometimes you guys have to let it go. You can't come up on the stage in God in front of people and be revealing like the world people. I'm talking about no men and women. And you know people in the audience are sick. They're suffering through things. And then you come up in there and you dress like somebody that's been out there. And then you expect them to be right before you. But then the words come out of your mouth is different. Okay, y'all don't want to get on that, but it's, it's the truth. Sometimes you're going to represent the kingdom of God. You need to know how to represent the kingdom of God. Pull your shirt up. Loosen your skirt up. Pull your dress down. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah, you want to dress like the world, but God never called you to be a world. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. When I grew up in my days, my mother came to church. Now, I'm not saying you got to do that today, but it's a way you can do to keep it stylish. You didn't see it about the neck and some ankles because they made sure they kept themselves covered that when God brought somebody along with them, and then he would be pleasing to him. You don't let the, let the world know what you got and what you look like under what you have on. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah, who am I? I am, I'm a prophet. That's what I am. And a man walking in an authoritative apostle position, you may not want to hear, but I'm going to let it go. And if you don't like it, guess what? You can turn it off. Because the truth is here, talking about this word over here in the area of Psalm 73. He makes it very clear. He makes it very strong. And he doesn't hold back when he speaks about this. In Psalm 73, if you go over there, let's look at this a little bit before we get going. I got to get out of here. Time is moving. I'm going to try to move out of here in just a little bit. He says, truly God is good to Israel. Such of a pure heart. But as for me, my but as for me, my feet almost stumbled. My steps nearly slipped. For I was envious, look here, of the boastful, of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Look what the brother was saying. I was jealous. I was a Christian and loved the Lord, but it seemed like they had it, it seemed like they had it going on. Kind of sound like Habakkuk stuff. Habakkuk got the plane about why all the wicked got it going on. The Lord had to tell Habakkuk, look. Write the vision on the wall, stay in your lane, and it's going to come. But it won't tear, but it'll come at the point in time. I believe when you stay in position, though things may not seem like they're working out for you right now, but God is a God of remembrance. He said his word won't go back void. He said his word will accomplish. He said that every word that proceeds out of his mouth, it will go forth and it will not come back void. But it is accomplishing word to do all that he declared. Now, in this particular story, David looked at the outside of the wicked. And he looked like they had it going on and he didn't have it going on. He felt like living a life in the Lord was a boring life. But I almost slipped and went over to their side when I saw all the good stuff that they had. And that's what we're doing right now. We keep on implementing things from the world into the church, trying to make it more appealing to the outside, what we're supposed to do. But the word of God is designed to do everything on its own. It don't need no help. In my end, I was somebody. The word is designed to engineer to do what it's designed to do. It will do what it said if you stay with it and look at it from his point of view. Am I a God that I should lie? Or am I a son of any piece of a flesh that I will have to repent? My words are yea and nay, and I'll be given a commandment to bless. I can and will not go void because I already spoke a word out of my mouth that declared and decreed that the promise of the Lord will come forth and it will not go back void. Listen to me. He says over in this fourth verse, for there is no pings in this particular area, the King James, I'm new King James verse, for there are no pings in their death or no pins in their death. Their strengths are formed. They are not troubled on other sides, nor do plague like other men. So what he's saying, okay, they got it going on. So why am I suffering? This is what the enemy gets you at. This is what the, this is the, this is what the enemy really diametrically opposes your understanding about God. When he gets you to turn away, once you take your eyes off the heels and what your help come from, and you don't see things moving the way you think they should move, the devil begin to taunt you. <laughs> He'll come and he'll snatch you clean up out of the hands of what you was designed to be. And sometimes in the real time, you keep on trying to look at it from another other position because you're trying to find some kind of way that you can get a little bit of that prosperity, that joy that looks good to your eyes. He declares a word over in the sixth verse. Therefore, the prize strides, the prize strides as a necklace, violence covered them like garment. Look at all this stuff he's telling you. 
violence covered them like garments. All the wickedness that you can get away with without even having any problem, without anybody saying anything to you. It seems like they veil with the negativity stuff, lust of the flesh, desires of the heart that it says in Galatians. It don't seem like they have no trouble. They don't get in trouble. They don't have no problems. They, they, they boast and strong. They got the best houses. They got the best cars. They got everything. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, behind the scene, God has got a calculated move at a certain time. He goes home and he says, their eyes bulge with abundance. They have no heart. Look here. They are, they are more hard than they could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning, uh, concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongues walk throughout the earth. See, 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 that's what we got on right now. Whether you want to look at it or not. And sometimes you just got to say what you're saying and do what you got to do. Sometimes you look at the things that's dealing with this presidency and you just got to say it loud like I ain't saying nothing. You got people who pray for something that oppress and cause division among the people. Like the word of God say, do all of our sins will have scarlet? Don't all of us have the opportunity to get right with God? But the Bible begins to understand that even as I be created the stars in the sky, the heavens above, and I declared on my word that every star that I saw and designed, I know every name of it. If I told the stars to stay and they stay, they will stay. And if I told the very people who I know down here, I know every inch of their head and every hair on their head. If I commanded the word not to look to something of a creature, but look to the creator. Now you got the world all messed up in division. You got Christians fighting against Christians. And then they want to use the whole opposite saying God knows what he put in place. No, you better pray for God to put the right person in place. Because whenever you're talking about the division, that's a problem. And if you say, see clearly with your own eyes, then maybe you need to get up out of what you're doing. God knows. Yeah, he knows what he put in place. The devil knows what he's doing too. That's why the word comes to Joe. Where goeth thou, Satan? Up and down and seeking whom I devour. This is nothing but a division in its own source and kind, but those who blind won't see it. And what it does, it brings separation among God's people. If you're this color, you're that color, you got this much money, that much, much money, then everybody want to jump on the bandwagon, whatever sees the best, or they rank, they nationality, they rank. And you got it all twisted, like Twizzlers. And they keep on bombarding you and duking you like you ain't got a mind of your own. The Bible says sometimes you got to understand, you got to quit getting led around by the ring, you've been led around by the ring of your nose too long. You let stuff keep pulling you in the opposite direction. And the word of God makes it clearly right here, they speak lawfully, they set their mouth against the heavens. Now, how can a man say he loved God? But then he comes back. If somebody done your brother or sister wrong, you should be so easily forgive. Not based on the laws of the land, but the laws of the kingdom. Some people just got to really understand that you got to have a heart for God. And they don't pick a whole lot of people to see what's going on. The world is in a divided state. And his own nationality and what's going on, if you can't see it, then you blind. And you ain't never tried to see. The Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. The Pharisees considered to be a group of councilmen of God too. Also, you had people of Jesus' followers. But they had the synagogues and had the temples and all the monies and robes and everything. And they looked good. They had their priests and prophets also. Read over in Second Chronicles, you'll see some things. How God had to come along according to word in 2 Chronicles in that 18 verse. He designed through the prophet Michael that he will put a lying spirit in their mouth. He'll lead them to believe something that was said to the lying prophets that'll make it true in what they're done. Should we go up the road Mount Gilead or should we not? Let me speak to a bunch of councilmen that think they know the word. And then let me get one prophet who's called Micah and let him tell the truth. Same thing with Elijah on Mount Carmel. All these things are revision and telling you what's going on today. The word of God is in reality on today. You keep on sticking your nose inside this book and ain't nothing wrong with it, but you keep reading and interpreting the wrong way and you need to get in a spirit and hear what the word of God has to say. There ain't a whole lot of people keep on running around saying the Lord told him it. The Lord said, you better be careful. You better be careful. When the Bible says, thus say the word, it's going to be what he said on an equality divide. It's not going to be division. God's not a God of confusion. 
but a sound mind, ingenuity and thoughts that his plans for everybody to prosper in every direction, in every area. He goes on down to this 10th verse. He said, but there is people return here and their waters are full of uh, the waters of a cup uh, full. Yeah, excuse me. Therefore, the people return here and waters of a full cup are drained by them. Waters of a full cup are drained by them. L listen to listen what he's saying. This is what he's saying right here. Because some of us will look at this word and we say, well, what does that mean? Read up the ninth verse of it again. They set their mouth against, against the heavens. And their tongues walk throughout the earth. Well, that person right there don't got a right for God. They got a form of godliness. Whenever you diametrically oppose the word of God and the deeds of God known as people, back in the day that the church of the way. They look at them as being a people as being wicked. A people that know much. That they believe in their Messiah. So we're going to punish them. Same thing with the rich man. You read it. He may have did stuff for the people, but he messed with the wrong one on that day. Because the Bible said when he came and gave the word, uh, came out in Elijah in the position of looking and asking for food from his table. If you read the scripture, he wasn't really at his table. But in the course of the time of those days, the sick would bring their people to their doors and leave them outside because he was a person of wealth and money. Am I talking to somebody? You better hear what I'm telling you. That's the same thing we're dealing with the situation we're in right now. If you understand what I'm saying, I don't get into politics on my station, period. But you got to be the truth and tell the truth and hold nothing but the truth. Elijah sat there before the table of this wicked man who was in his castle, but he's at the door. Because in those days, they set the sick and the lonely outside the door that they may care for them. But the Bible says it came with division. It came with a division. All the wealth that he had didn't make it over into the kingdom of God. Am I talking to somebody? You better hear me when I'm talking. The wealth that he had had no interest or no play with the kingdom of God. But God, as he said in his word over in the book of Luke chapter 4, that he called the word of God. When you go to Luke chapter 4, when he talked about how the spirit of the Lord, I got to get out of here. When he said in Luke chapter 4, he said, but the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed, because he has anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel. He never said anything about a person who was of great wealth. He knew where the people were suffering was coming from. People are, men, look here, I'm telling you, listen to me. People are so messed up, they can be starving, have no clothes, no money, and no food. They'll still run out the idol that won't support them. Based on the ethnicity a place or creed or whatever they have. And God never looked at it like that. When you read the word of God over in the book of, of Luke, Luke tells you one thing. He said, it's by the spirit of the Lord which is upon him, who has anointed him to preach the gospel. He has sent him to the brokenhearted, not to the rich. Go back to the book of Luke and think about the rich man. He had the money. It wasn't nothing wrong with what he was doing. He was doing charitable deeds for the people who bought their sick ones and laid them at the door. But hold on. After a while, he did. He died. But what was his mindset at? It was on his money. He believed God before he believed. Uh, he believed his money before he believed God. He had more power in the interest of his wealth than he had to the interest of God being able to do what he needed to do through him. Money ain't everything, but the word of God does declare money solves all things. But I believe it's a way about you got to go everything. Man, I got to get out of here. Let me finish this out in Luke 18. He said he healed the brokenhearted, proclaimed the liberty of the captive. Look what he said. Recover the sight to the blind and set liberty to those who are oppressed and proclaim the acceptance year of the Lord. That's what Christ came to do. He came to look up at the widows of the gate. Now, if you call yourself a widow at the gate, then you ought to be in coalition, wondering what color you are for the people who are actually going through challenges and changes in their life. Whenever you ain't got nothing yourself, and then you want to take sides on somebody who's doing something, they ain't giving you a dime, you ain't got a pen in your pocket, but you trust a system that they put together that's so diametrically designed and diverse and so separated that you allow the creature to come in and give you more information than the creator. And then he'll duke you in your mind. Oh, you don't want to hear what I'm talking about because you keep on reading information whether they understand the revelation. 
And I'm trying to get you to see something. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that even as I speak according to your will, your purpose, and your power, that in the process of all things that's going on around the world, that it be no weapon formed against us to prosper, that even as the men and women go out and rightly divide the word of the kingdom of God, give them the ability to understand how to swing your sword. Some don't understand, need to go back and read and pray and ask God, what is it is that you're telling me in the name of Jesus that they may have a clear understanding that when the word of God comes to fruition it will be no division or separation between what you created I believe in the name of Jesus that all who are going through ups and downs and tasking in life you will rescue God you are right on time God and you said in your word Father God that you're not a God that you should lie and you're certainly not a son of any piece of a flush that you got to repent you've been given a command to bless you said you can and will not revert I decree right now in the name of Jesus for all those who are in their workplaces going out and doing their daily task as it said the model prayer on this morning in the name of Jesus to keep them protected from all hurt harm and danger and all those who didn't have the ability to get down on their knees this morning I stand in the gap for each and every one of them they may know and understand that you are a omnipotent God you are a merciful God and in the midst of your plan that everything and all things is already made possible oh Lord I ask you to reveal in the spirit to touch each and every one of them one by one Father God go and visit them where they are, Father God, right where they stand. Shake them in the name of Jesus and let them realize and understand the time is at hand, that they better understand how to rightly divide your word, Father God, in the name of Jesus. As they pray, Father God, let them ask, what is your will be done? Not what they think they might know. It's too many things we're seeing come across these nets and internets saying things that they know not to say. You keep on looking and get up under somebody and God told you you need to be the number, you need to be the word yourself to go out into all the land and proclaim the gospel. You don't need nobody to appoint you. You don't need nobody to make you something that you're not because the word of God said it was already in you before you were born. If God got a man or woman designed to help you in what you're doing, you keep on looking at a creature before the creator and God is trying to get you to see the words that I put in you are spirit and truth. He said that you got to go out to all the land and begin to proclaim the gospel. Quit looking at somebody to try to put you up to make you feel good because of a name, a title of a building. You got to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but you got to learn how to acknowledge God in all this way. He got a GPS system to you for you right over in Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts and I know the plans that I got for you. Good plans and not of evil. God got expected future for you when you lean not to your own understanding. But you begin to acknowledge God in all his way. He got something for you. But you got to have a heart. The reason your blessings is not coming the way you need to do, check your heart. Do an MRI on yourself. Find out in, find out the people in your life who you dislike. And if you got anything against anybody, especially on a politician level, you don't get into that stuff. You find out what God has for you to do. And at the time you're going through this triumph and change that you need to trust in God in the midst of all the things that's going on around you. And your first assignment is to love what he created. That's why he told you in the Ten Commandments. First five commandments deal with his relationship with him, not a president. Or man, he may be there because did God put him there? I'll let you figure that out. And you tell me what you think. And he said the second five commandments, he makes you deal with the prospects of getting along with your brother and sister. Don't let nobody come in and bombard you and divide you from having the love in your heart about what God created. And then you see your blessings clearly begin to come. I speak a word in the name of Jesus for all those who's a bamboozled and don't understand what's going on and get an idea of what another man told them. Let them go on their knees and prostrate their step before you that they get a clear understanding about what you said and not what a man said. That they may know and understand that you are God and beside you there is no other. I thank you, Father God, in the time that we spent on this line to hear what you have to say that's coming from the kingdom of God. Bless HNLC International, the woman of God, all my sisters and brothers, whatever they may be in traveling. Thank you, Father God, that they saved my key is safe in the name of Jesus. Look over my young daughter, Amber. Line up everything in our body according to the word, according to the blood. That there be no discrepancy or anything in either one of their lives. Now one of them in the name of Jesus. Bless this household, Father God, up and down and all around. Let the power of the conviction of God's word move through and out and shut down everything that's not like God. I decree and declare that it's done. In your precious and powerful and mighty name, I Pray, Lord, amen. Well, we got to get ready to get on this another show that's coming up here at HNLC Studios with my young niece uh, coming out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. I'm going to get in with her with some great people she has turned me on to. Hope it's going to be a great time. 
It's going to be a great service. And we're going to hear what that's what the word of God has to say that's coming from the kingdom. And then you guys have a great day. Hey, look, we love you. Y'all take care.